And now I'd like to recognize our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductees. We will be honoring 14 individuals this evening as inductees into our, two, into our 23rd class, the class of 2024. On a special note, I will not be introducing our program inductees in the order that they appear in the program. I will juggle the order, which will also keep our inductees anxious and possibly a bit nervous. <laughs> Following the Rick McKinney rule, the five minute maximum speech by each inductee, and we emphasize five minutes just as we did with the Lifetime Service Awards, a friend, coach, former athlete, teammate, or family member will present the inductee with his or her plaque. We hope that by using a presenter selected by the inductee, that it will make it the award even more meaningful to the inductee of their representative. So when I announce the inductee, I'll also announce the presenter and ask them both to come forward. And inductees, this is a warning. You have five minutes. I will be giving myself, all speakers, a 30-second warning that if you speak past the five minutes, you can ask Ken Olson, be prepared because you might get a verbal thank you from me at any time. Right, Ken? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Floyd Winter. His presenter is Secretary of USA Wrestling and 2008 USA Wrestling Man of the Year, Mr. Van Stokes. I would like to thank everyone for coming tonight uh, for the Hall of Fame for uh, 2024. Uh, I have uh, most of my Army team that I coached over the years. They're here. Uh, they can't make weight, but they're here. <laughs> uh, many, many, many of them went on the Army wrestling team. Went on to be brigade, battalion commanders in combat. They flew helicopters, fixed wing aircraft. Do they were doctors. We even have a Hollywood actor here uh, that was on the team. Uh, so it was uh, fun, uh, not for them, but for me. Uh, also, I have my friends from Porterville High School that I, their classmates. Uh, they're here. Could you stand up, the Panthers, Porterville High School? Uh, and I have uh, my family here. Uh, could you stand up, please? That, that's my son Paul right there. Stand up, Paul. And then next to him is, is my daughter, Jennifer. And my, of course, my, my, my grandsons, they're there. The um, 19, she's uh, 78, we're at the Armed Forces Championships. Uh, in Guanaco, Virginia. It was a great rivalry, of course, with the Army and Marines every year. And uh, I was in the finals wrestling a, a Marine. And then it was three, three, three periods. And I was, it was tied two to two. And I was pushing and pummeling and the uh, referee on the mat, uh, was getting ready to caution somebody out. Uh, and Paula, was, my wife, she's right there with the camera. She, she was pregnant with Jennifer. She was big. She was, 
could. She 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 couldn't make weight either, but she was she was like three weeks overdue, and uh, she was jumping up and down and screaming, you know, and the referees stopped the match and they raised my hand, you know. So she's and Jennifer and her mother were responsible for that gold medal that I won, so, and 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 I was getting ready to go to the uh, world team trials, and I told Paula, you know, can you stay pregnant for another four weeks? She said, no, 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 she didn't, she didn't. But uh, the, for me, it was, it was a great, great time to be around these individuals that, that uh, represented not only us, the Americans, the international competition, but they did great things uh, here, and have another another friend, Mr. Van Stokes, who's the secretary treasurer for USA Wrestling. I've known him for 50, 50 years, 50 years, uh, and he's done a lot for the military. He's, uh, I would say, close to a million, million soldiers that he's affected in his 40 years as a sports director uh, at Fort Campbell. And also, uh, he was at the, uh, in Germany at uh, the uh, sports headquarters in Heidelberg. Uh, and, he, and, he, and he works with, still works with the military. But uh, hope someday he gets in the Hall of Fame. He deserves it. But thank you. and. Uh, uh, if anybody wants to join the Army, come and see me, okay? And now, we normally don't do this, however, we've only done it twice. We have the presenter, Mr. Van Stokes, say a few words. First of all, I want to say what a pleasure it is to be here, and I want to congratulate all of the inductees here tonight. I have looked through the list of inductees in the past. I attended the Cal State Kids Freestyle Wrestling Championship today, and I'm going to speak on behalf, Bruce, of USA Wrestling and tell you point blank, I don't think there's anybody in America that does it better than the California State Wrestling Association. <laughs> Dwayne Morgan, Dwayne Morgan, Anthony, great event this evening. I just salute you and compliment you for everything that you do. The actor in the room wrote in this book, in the forward here, it's called Stay Low and Circle Left. It's the story of Floyd Bad News winner, our actor in the room tonight. Randy Couture said, I believe there are a few people in our journey through the world who affect us deeply. They change your perspective and even your trajectory in life. Most of us do not recognize how important these people were in our development till much later, when the dust of those challenges, trials, and tribulations settles, and we can look back. And so it is on the life of this inductee. I could talk about his triumphs as a wrestler. I could talk about his time as an athlete. I could talk about his time as a coach. I can talk about his experiences as a clinician going around the world teaching friendship through sports in the sport of wrestling. You've already heard he's born in Porterville, and from there he went to Vietnam. His mother had to enlist him in the Army at the age of 17, and with a short time, he was to the front with soldiers on the battlefields of Vietnam. And there's what he learned what wrestling and combat was about in life. His background is printed in the, in the bios in your sheet tonight, but 14-time Armed Services Champion, the first American to win a greco roman medal in international competition in 1972 at the World Military Games in Ankara, Turkey. He was the coach of the Armed Forces team. He was the coach of the USA wrestling team at numerous national competitions, and he was on the staff in the 1984 Games in Los Angeles as a member of the Olympic coaching staff there. But what I want to tell you that's not printed in the program and I've got a number of people that can attest to this over here to the side. Floyd's impact on the life of so many soldiers 
is absolutely incredible. His challenge was to get them to rise to the highest level possible. And our philosophy in Army sports was the opportunity for everybody to participate with the opportunity for each to rise to the highest level possible. That could be on the Olympic platform. That could be on the national stage. That could be at the Armed Forces Championships, wherever that was. He was there to help get that done. But he believed you had to work hard, as Cale Sanderson says, and you have to have fun. He was about fun, believe me. They called him bad news. They called him bad news for a reason. I read one time in Stars and Stripes, it said, bad news, winter arrives in Europe. Of course, it was talking about the weather, but he swears that he's multilingual, and all that means is he can order beer in several different languages. <laughs> but what I want to leave you with is this. He showed America what the heart and soul of the American soldier was about. You can take 10, ar 10 Army wrestlers and take them on the toughest mission that the military has to offer. And I'm betting on those 10 Army, Army wrestlers to get the mission done. He made winners out of soldiers. He gave them the confidence that they could go forth and do anything in their careers, and they did. They went forth in the military, did great things, and continue to do great things as they retired and separated from the service. He will be ever noted for his humility and his unselfish service to the American Armed Forces and to the sport of wrestling. I am pleased and I am honored to present this award tonight to Floyd Winter. Wow, that was powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Russell Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Yuru Washington. His presenters are college teammate and good friend, Mr. Alfonso Tucker. All right, so, <clears throat> well, I've got to send them a tippy toes, maybe, <laughs> not sure. Uh, I've got a clock here counting. Um, <laughs> but uh, really, yeah, I just, uh, I'm, I'm really grateful uh, to be here. You know, when I, when I thought about tonight, and uh, I'm not one to, to really think about myself, but uh, it's, it's great and, and nice to be honored. I feel like immense gratitude, really. And what I think about mostly are just all the people, like all the people in this room, all the people in my life who have kind of helped me get to the place that I am. Um, and there's a few people that I just want to take a moment to, to recognize uh, tonight. <clears throat> First, uh, all of the inductees and honorees, you know, congratulations to you. Uh, well deserved. Uh, the California Wrestling Hall of Fame, thank you so much for this honor. It's very much appreciated. Um, I have a couple of coaches who are in the room. Coach Dennis Toledo, thank you for all you've done for me. <clears throat> uh, coach Bruce Burnett, my coach at the Olympic Training Center, didn't know you were going to be here, but thank you so much for all you did for me. <clears throat> Dana and Mike Darling, uh, they're my extended new family. You know, thank you. Uh, and uh, their adopted son, and my brother, Alfonso Tucker, who's here presenting, thank you so much, and his wife, Andrene, who's here. Um, Catalina Arboleta and Brian Guerrero, uh, and Brian's father, Fred, and Georgia, who are here. Uh, Lenin and Clark Mello, uh, thank you. Um, you know, those are people who have just played a pivotal role in my life, and. 
I'm just so grateful for your support. And, you know, lastly, I know um, uh, a past coach of mine, Robert Arbalo, is going to be recognized tonight. Uh, he coached alongside uh, Coach Bill Music, and, and those are two people who really kind of just put me on a trajectory and a path um, to, to, to do great things and to believe in myself and uh, to be ambitious and to be curious and uh, most importantly, In fact, I think it's almost every single person that I know has wrestled or is connected to wrestling in some way. And, uh, you know, really, I just feel honored and grateful and thankful. And, you know, thank, thank you all for being here. And um, that's all I've got to say. That was three minutes, 25 seconds. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Last thing, uh, we actually coached together at Buchanan High School. Uh, when I was 19 years old, I coached alongside Anthony, and uh, that was fantastic. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted into 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Yuru Washington. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Lorenzo Neal. His presenter is his son, Lorenzo Neal Jr. Good evening. Start the clock. There we go. Barry, I'm going to be fast. You guys are always talking about me, so I'm not going to be up here all night, so I get it. But you know, guys, I'm from Lemoore, so my father was a preacher, so go ahead, take a water break. I'm, I'm just getting started. And when I start yelling, that means I'm almost finished, but then I'll go another 10 more minutes. So get ready. Here we go. But no, first, I just want to say uh, I really appreciate and very humbled and honored to be uh, into the Hall of Fame. It's a, it's a, it's a privilege and honored. And I know everyone that's getting inducted tonight are privileged and honored to be here. And I want to say congratulations to you all, too. And for me, it's simple. It's a small town, little small town boy. And uh, watching some of your dreams come true has been amazing. And it's been an amazing journey. My mother's here, my sister, my son, Jerry, Patrick, my good friend, Barry Winslow, who's been there filming from I was high school, college, always filming every single one of my matches and just had a a lot of great people to help me on along the way. My wrestling coach, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Ken Olson, who beat me up, who beat me up all the time, who was always tough. He knew I could beat him wrestling, but he would try to do these karate kid moves where he start pushing in my ear. I was like, I don't want cauliflower ear, so stop. So he was always trying to beat me because, yeah, yeah, there he is right there. And uh, so he really helped me. And you know, high school went on to win the state championship, runner up, and to third, fourth second, first, so it was really awesome. And then, uh, of course, when I got to Fresno State, Coach Toledo, what he did to me is uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Great story, though. Here's the deal. So, I, you know, wrestling was, I love wrestling because it helped me with my football career. It helped me, you know, just to balance tough, you know, because you can, football, you can blame it on your quarterback, your offensive lineman. I mean, wrestling is just you and another guy in there, so you can't lie and say it was, you know, your lineman fell down, the quarterback didn't throw the ball to the right person. It's just you and another guy. So it's very, very tough. And I remember getting ready to get drafted. I'm at Fresno State. Coach Toledo, where are you at? Stand up. Where's Coach Toledo? Yeah, so let me tell you. What give this guy a hand. Let's give this guy a hand. But I, I don't know if you guys want to give this guy a hand after this. So I'm, I'm wrestling, right? So this is, a, this is the night before the combine. So I got to go to Indianapolis to go to combines where you run the 40. You know, you guys watch on NFL Network, the combine. So Coach Toledo said, oh, Lorenzo, come on, wrestle. So I'm wrestling against a guy from Oklahoma State. What, Oklahoma State, I think? Yeah. 
And I ended up winning, but we went, I think, overtime. So they have to carry me off the mat. I'm just coming out of football. I'm wrestling. And I'm getting ready to go to combine. This is on Saturday. Combine starts on Sunday. I'm dying on the mat. Just beat a guy from Oklahoma. He was ranked Kurt Mann. I think he was ranked number two in the country. So I'm dead. Check this out. Coach Little takes me to the airport. My flight's canceled. I freaking can't get on the flight. So I have to leave on a red eye. I get to Indianapolis, two hours of sleep. And I got to go run the 40 and do 225 and bench press and do all these exercises on the 40. And by, by the way, I was doing 225 38 times. I think I did it like 22 that day. I think I ran a four. I ran a four five. I think I ran a five flat. So my numbers was really bad. Guess who was at the airport to pick me up on my way back? Coach Toledo. And guess what I did? I just walked right by and said, you cost me a lot of money. But he, <laughs> <laughs> he, true story, coach. True story, right? But you know what? It was, it was all worth it. If I had to do it all over again, I would do it. I, I love wrestling, what it did for me, the character, the tough work, the people that I met, and just being selfish. I mean, wrestling, has, you, have to be, you have to give up yourself and understand it's bigger than you. And I'm just so grateful. And that, what I've taken out of all this is just life is about serving. It's about what do you do to give back. These accolades, they come and go, but it's about the people you meet, the lives you touch. That's what life's about. It's about who are you going to serve what are the people you're going to pick up and bring them up with you? Because it's, it's lonely just being at the top. Life's about us all sharing. So know that we're all together in this. And I just want to tell you, love all you guys, and congratulations to everyone. Three minutes and 52 seconds, Barry. Jerry Patrick, I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Lorenzo Neal. You know, Lorenzo, I'm, I'm visualizing Coach Delito's, you know, saying, Lorenzo, I don't care if you got a combine, you're going to wrestle this badge right now. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Russell Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Franz Affentranger. His presenter is his teammate, Mr. Craig Tobin. Good evening. I just got to say it's an honor to be chosen for this. It was a complete surprise. Never thought I would get here. Anyway, uh, just following Lorenzo Needle here, and he was telling uh, the story about how wrestling helped him move around and uh, get the feel of people moving in on him and takedowns and whatever. I was the opposite. I'm in the dairy business with my family. And we had animals that would look at you and try to run by you. So you had to figure out how they moved. So you, you got pretty good at feeling people, whatever they wanted to do to you. So there we go. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, all my old former teammates that uh, came here today. Some of them uh, will be inducted in the Hall of Fame also. but. Uh, we had, a good, we had a good team. We had good camaraderie. And we had good coaches. My coaches in uh, high school, JC, and in college, Daryl Fletcher, Bruce Fitzenreiter, and uh, Josie, they all left a, um, impressionable marks on me and the rest of the teams. I uh, can't, I can't speak to lightly about the things that they did for me. Uh, back then, there weren't too many pictures. There was no cameras. Well, we had cameras, but not like we did now. <laughs> so we did have one way to communicate. And I was looking through uh, my wife's. She kept all the news, uh, most of the newspapers we had. And I was looking through all these. Uh, 
papers about the stories of our teams and, and how we did and going through there. And then I came across uh, this thing, and I figured this was the closest thing we had to texting back then. And that's what she had in her thing. So this is the way we communicated with our bumper. <laughs> anyway, I thought that was. I had the pleasure of watching some of my former teammates, Mike Bull. He was a state champion in the first California state championship. And he's here tonight. I watched uh, a four-time champion from BHS also through the years that we've had. So I think that's about it. <laughs> Gentleman right over here, the little one, right here, before the camera. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Russell Hall of Fame, Mr. Franz Affentranger. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mrs. Sherry Ballou Kennedy. Our presenters are workout partner, Mrs. Joe Nguyen. I'm a terrible public speaker, but I want to make sure I thank everybody before I go on with some silly story. I want to thank my people. Table 25. <laughs> my boyfriend, Burr, who got me into wrestling, officially. My cousin, Marianne, my biggest cheerleader. And my coach, Walter Allrich. Now, this guy tortured me constantly. <laughs> Elbows, chins, throws. We would run, and he would chase me. And if he caught me, I had to run another three miles. He held my hair when I threw up. He was so proud of me. <laughs> And then I also want to say Sandy. She was a teammate, a coach, a mother. And I'm so proud of all the girls and women who wrestle today because it wasn't that way when I wrestled. <laughs> Someone told me it was 20 <laughs> something years ago. So <laughs> I also want to thank my workout partner, Joey. He came down on Saturdays. He came with me to Von Hitchcock camp when Women didn't go there, but he was always there for me. I want to thank you and thank everybody that was there for me because I had a, I had a lot of support, a lot more than most women 26 years ago. And I, I, took, I took my wrestling with me when I wrote and all the other things I did. I just want to say thank you to everybody. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Russell Hall of Fame, Mrs. Sherry Ballou Kennedy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Russell Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Alan Cook. His presenter and colleague, Mr. Bruce Jeff Coach. I don't know if you can think of anything more frightening for, than an old wrestler getting up in front of about 500 people and, and talking about himself. Uh, I'm not sure that's uh, an easy thing to do. But I've had a great run wrestling. I've I enjoyed wrestling pretty much all my life. I, I didn't get into it until I was in high school uh, as a freshman. And uh, 
I had never even seen a wrestling match before that. The only reason I got into it is because my cousin, who was a little older than me, he had wrestled down in San Bernardino, and uh, he used to just beat the daylights out of me when we'd get together. And so I figured I'm going to get a little little payback. So I joined the wrestling team. I didn't win a match for at least half the season. And I finally went up to my coach and I said, you know, I don't think this is for me. I don't think I'm going to wrestle anymore. And he was a pretty smart guy, I think. He said, uh, you know what, just take a week off. Just don't come to practice, do whatever you want to do, and come back and let me know what you want to do. So uh, I did that, and after a week, I started feeling pretty good. And I got back in there and told the coach, I said, I think I'm going to give it a little more, uh, give it another try. And so after that, I, I, I finally uh, almost won a match. <laughs> the next week, I think I had wrestled the, the, the league champ, and I'd lost to him by like a point. And all of a sudden, a little light went off in my head, and I said, I think I can do this. And so after that, I wrestled, uh, you know, at the, at the CIF level. I went over to Cal Poly, uh, wrestled for Cal Poly for, for four years there. And, and then after that, I, I, I had been a Christian all my life, and so I, I wanted to do something with that. And so I went on the Athletes in Action wrestling team. And they had two teams, one on the East Coast, and one down in Long Beach. And uh, they had some pretty prominent guys in there. Uh, they had uh, Ben Peterson who would wrestle in for them, and, and John Peterson, his brother, both Olympians, two-time Olympians, and both gold medalists. And Gene Davis was my coach down in, in uh, Long Beach. And so uh, I started wrestling with them. And uh, I had a great time. And just like all the other guys that seem to be come up here, they've uh, picked up a lot of really close friends along the way. And that's probably one of the most significant things uh, that I've found in wrestling is that uh, all of my friends seem to be, most of them, my close friends seem to be wrestlers. And uh, so I, I uh, ended up doing a little bit of international wrestling and, and uh, I wrestled a lot. Of, I, my workout partners back in the 1976 when I tried out for the, for the Olympics uh, then were uh, uh, a guy named Lloyd Keezer, and he was a world champ. And then I worked out with my friend uh, John Peterson. He was a weight above me, but those were my partners. And, and that's when I met, uh, uh, I worked out some with uh, Dave Schultz back then, and he was just starting out. He was a young guy that, phenomenal guy. For everybody in here probably knows him, but, but uh, he had just placed second in the Tbilisi tournament as a high school student. And so uh, I, had to, I had the pleasure of spending some time working with him, too, and as a young kid. And just over the years, it's been just a, a real pleasure for me to, to just to be a part of the wrestling world. And so I just want to thank everybody here and anybody that was involved in, in, uh, in uh, inducting me. And uh, I just consider it a real honor. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing, correction, inducted to the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Alan Cook. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Pat Powell. His presenter, It is presented to the class of 2012 Lifetime Service Champion, Mr. Gary Pedersen. Boy, Pat, I'll tell you, I think we got a lot of uh, Ric Flair's in the house tonight or something. <laughs> wow. Got a lot of folks around here. Um, I want to begin by just saying this, and uh, this will be a theme throughout the things that I talk about. And a guy told this to me a long time ago, it stuck, and I, I tell this to a lot of folks that I coach and have an opportunity to be around. And if it weren't for guys, people like you, there would be no guys like me. 
And as I stand up here and talk, there's a lot of folks that made me who I am. So I can't really just sit up here and say what a great guy I am because, well, I am who I am for a lot of reasons. And a lot of them are sitting in this room around. And I, I hope I don't miss anybody. And if I got any time, well, we got a little timer right here. Well, my wife's off the hook. She was going to be giving me finger signals and telling me, hey, that'll make it easier. Um, I left home on a Greyhound bus when I was 17 years old. And I went to San Jose State, and I never looked back. And along that way, I've come in contact with some people that are here in this room. And, and, and again, the reason I'm here, I wouldn't be here if not for them. Um, the Garvey family, and I want to thank many people, and I want to thank the Garvey family for coming here, my wife's brothers and sisters. There's eight of them, and they all made it down. I met Monica, my wife, when I was a sophomore at San Jose State, and I didn't have any family in San Jose, and I was up there by myself outside of the, the, the Spartan wrestling community, and they took me in and made me feel real good and made me feel whole and helped me become who I am. Um, I want to thank my cousins for coming out here today. All my nephews, half of Houkville, I think most of Houkville's here. And I didn't know they were coming. I, I didn't think they could make it until I got to my cousin Paul's house last night and I turned, or today, and I turned the corner and they were there and I just, I started crying a little bit. <laughs> I want to thank some special friends that are here to support me. I want to especially thank my ex-teammates, Spartan teammates, Albert Perez, Brian Canale, Eddie Baza. Um, I'll get to you in a minute, though. Um, I want to take this opportunity to honor some fallen Spartans, one who's having his service today, and if it weren't for this, I would have been there. And his name was Ken Bryson. He was my teammate, my roommate, and uh, he'll be missed. Um, Two ex-Spartans that were hugely impactful on my life, Wayne Jones and Casey Gulliford, who's one along with us. And so I wanted to mention them and honor them in front of you guys tonight because they were real, they were all real important to me. And so again, without them, I wouldn't be who I am standing up in front of you now. I have some acknowledgments and some special acknowledgments. And I guess they're all special acknowledgments. I don't know. I had a pretty successful wrestling career. I think I, I think I was an overachiever. Um, my biggest satisfaction was my coaching career and the lives of the people I touched, just like the lives of those of you out here who touched me. And uh, I think I was real successful because I've never seen a kid that wrestled for me that punched me in the head. <laughs> they all give me a big hug and say, "Hey, coach." As a matter of fact, Karis Clevis is right here. And, my neck, my neck still hurts from that big bear hug, that big bear hug he gave me. And uh, I want to thank uh, Coach Pedersen for bringing me into coaching. I want to thank Coach Clevis for helping me along in my coaching. Those two are, had a huge impact on my life. They helped teach me how to coach, to mentor me on the good and the bad and what you could get away with. Um, <laughs> Pedersen was real good about that. <laughs> I want to offer a special acknowledgement to my wife, who is my life. I, I, lo I love her dearly. <laughs> my brother, Michael, who's always been real supportive of me, and I've been real proud of him. And it's neat to see him, how proud he is of me today. And I just, it's all I can do to keep him crying every time I see him. My buddy, Rick Gaben who was my roommate in college and my best friend through college and my best friend to this day. Um, special shout out to Daryl Pope and Mac Matt Atlantic, my teammates at San Jose State. We transferred to Cal State Bakersfield together. If not for them pushing me, beating the crap out of me, me trying to beat the crap out of them, I wouldn't have been the wrestler I was. Um, Easy, easy, big fella. I got, so they got five more minutes. Um, 
I have, I have a couple of special acknowledgments and I need to get to them. Today, here with me today is my coach from high school, Coach Thompson. If not for him, I would have never even left Lompoc. And the, the catalyst was in one day, and I can remember distinctly, he just came up to me and I was a TA for his class and he goes, hey, Pat, what are you going to do? We were done wrestling. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, college. I go, I never really thought about college. It was never discussed at my dinner table. And he goes, I got colleges wanting to contact you. And I go, I don't know. And he goes, well, would you like to go to college? I go, well, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> he says, you got to go to class. You got to go to your American government class and you got to check the SATs. And I never missed a class after that. I took the SATs and did well enough to get into school, and I never looked back. And uh, he's here today, and he's a very special person in my life that I probably owe quite a bit to. The next I want to acknowledge is my brother Leonard, who got us started in this back when we were about five years old. And uh, he's been one of my biggest supporters through high school. He, him and his wife chased me all over California. He was, he took a week off of work and worked out with me before the state tournament. He still had it in him, too. It was all I could do to keep up. 2%, baby. 2%. Um, and I also want to thank TJ Kerr. As much as I hated that dude, I loved him just as much. <laughs> TJ was an interesting cat, and he was very difficult to wrestle for. But the rooms and the atmosphere he created were, were amazing. I mean, that room at San Jose State, it was a, it was a butcher shop. I mean, it, it was, if, I never sniffed a takedown for the first four months I was there. It was, yeah, that room was so tough. But, and some of my Spartan teammates are here. I especially want to recognize Jeff Smith. I had a moment of a bout to the death, man. And I love that guy, dude. He was, he was like our team mother. And, but there was no, there was not a lot of pat on the backs, man. It, it, it was pretty rough in that room. And, uh, I would love to tell a bunch of stories because, man, I got, <laughs> I got a lot of stories. But his clock went off, so I think I'm done. Anyway, thank you all so much. God bless you. Picture, gentlemen, picture. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Pat Howell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Chris Pendleton. His presenter is his high school teammate, Grant Ryder. Start the timer. You start talking. <laughs> All right. Uh, keep this short. It's uh, almost bedtime. Uh, <laughs> just want to thank everybody. Um, wish I had prepared more speeches. I just knew I didn't want to follow Daryl Vasquez because he's going to be pretty good because he's pretty smart. I had that Oklahoma State education, so bear with me. Um, a lot of thoughts have gone through my head uh, tonight about who I am and how I got to this point. And really, it's not about any of my accolades or any of my accomplishments. It's about the people that impacted my life and drove me to the levels that I'm at. Um, I got asked a question earlier, what's my favorite accomplishment? And I really don't have one. My favorite memories are all weird memories for, for me wrestling. Being in Porterville and, you know, a, a dirty gym eating five cent red vines. That's how old I am, five cent red vines for a five dollar entry fee. And getting whipped, I wasn't very good when I was young. But one thing that has been my life's passion is 
helping young men and women achieve their goals. Wrestling, by definition, is struggle. And I think the world needs a lot more wrestling in it. It's not easy. We are going to get beat. We are going to get hurt. We're all going to get knocked down. Everybody in this room has battle scars. But we all have gotten up, and it's made us better people. And so that's what I'm going to leave with. Is That's my passion. That's my uh, one-year-old getting up on the stage. Uh, <laughs> it's a family affair. But I'm going to keep my time short because, like any good wrestler, I want to embarrass uh, my presenter because I think he has a few words and still, whoa, look at that, a minute 35. I, that was fast. clock is ticking. The stuff I let you talk me into, Chris, this, this is nerve-wracking. Um, I'll rattle through it quick. Uh, Chris is one of my best friends of all time. I count myself lucky to be considered one of his. Um, I don't probably need to explain to a room full of wrestlers the bonds that can develop throughout a wrestling career at any level. Uh, late night road trips after dual meets uh, with the AC cranked and all the windows down so your driver slash coach can stay alert. Or maybe it's because you barely beat that league rival team that you're supposed to blow out of the water by only a few points that evening and he wants this memory to stick. Uh, coming in 13 pounds overweight for a surprise Sunday weighing that you all should have seen coming. Uh, only to find out that no one's leaving until everyone's within five pounds of their weight class. Uh, the stressors of making weight, making grades, living up to expectations, grinding through rel relentless grueling practice and competition schedules while guys from other teams, uh, other sport teams, are eating three slices of pizza for lunch every day. Uh, these things build individual character, and they also build friendships that uh, not very many people get to uh, experience at a depth, uh, such as wrestling friends. Um, I also probably don't need to explain to you, a uh, room full of wrestlers and wrestling fans, how big of a deal Chris Pendleton is. He can probably tell you that himself. Um, but... <laughs> But a quick Google search will return things like top 10 most dominant college wrestlers of all time. Um, I would rather up here tell you a quick story. Um, the year was 2000. It was my junior year. It was Chris's senior year of high school. I was one win away from qualifying for state that year, a mistake that I regretted, but I would soon regret even more. As I sat in the stands that evening before the tournament, fat and happy at 130 plus pounds, a smidge heavier than my 119-pound weight class, I had no idea how dangerously close I was to Chris's 145-pound weight class until my coach, Kent Olson, said, Hey, Ryder, come work out with Pendleton. What started off as a standard drilling session evolved quickly, to say the least. I was soon doing everything in my power not to be made to look like a complete idiot. Uh, when the world's most embarrassing wrestling move, the spladle, is talked about, it's usually mentioned that someone was caught in this predicament. My experience that evening was more of a methodically and relentlessly being bent and twisted into said position. Was it entirely necessary that he drill that move that evening? Debatable. Did he need to hold me there long enough for our coach's lovely wife, Melinda Olson, to grab her camera and come snap a few shots? Probably not. But as I lay there, spread eagle on the wrestling mat in front of hundreds if not thousands of wrestling spectators' watchful gazes, with nothing but my mesh shorts and a pair of underwear between my most private anatomy and their eyes, I realized a couple things. First of all, my friend Chris is kind of an a-hole. <laughs> Secondly, I will never ever, I do not want to ever be workout fodder for another person's glory story. With his innate ability to motivate, um, I found myself qualifying for the state tournament, placing in state, and wrestling uh, at the college level the next year. Although I was a mediocre one, it was still a great experience. Um, wrestling at Oregon State University, go Beavs, where he now coaches. He had, a state, he had a stacked weight class that weekend, and I think what's more important than what that experience did for my career is what it probably did for his. I really think it springboarded him to do what he did. The confidence he gained from wrapping me up <laughs> and embarrassing me in front of thousands of people, I think probably led him to go on to do what he's done since then. 
Um, what he continues to do for this sport through coaching and his innate ability to motivate and his obvious passion for the sport and his athlete's progression is equally as impressive as his career itself. I'm beyond honored to be a part of this celebration and to be allowed to come up here and tell you a little about uh, my friend, Mr. Chris Pendleton. Chris, to you I'd like to say, never forget what I like to call the springboard splaydle. I love you and you're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Chris Pendleton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Dan Pry. His presenter is his wife, Sandy Pry. First off, first off, I want to thank whoever it was that uh, nominated me and, and thought that I might belong in this company. Um, it's very humbling. In my five minutes, I want to tell you the story of my 50 years of, of uh, being in wrestling. Starts as most people, it doesn't really start freshman year directly because I had never wrestled before or anything. I was at Sime Valley High School, and I was an unmotivated student. I was a mediocre athlete, but an enthusiastic one. I did pretty okay on uh, frost football, sixth man on the basketball team. My PE teacher that year was the wrestling coach. His name is Erwin Goldblum. And he's, he's a Hall of Famer. A significant part of the class was a wrestling unit. Most of the class was a wrestling unit. I, I enjoyed it. I did okay. And one day the coach takes me aside and he says, why are you playing basketball? I said, I like basketball. My brother's good at basketball. He said, Bry, how tall do you think you're going to get? <laughs> My sophomore year, I became a wrestler. My life was transformed. I found out I had a knack for it. I liked the hard work and the discipline, things I'd been taught at home. I like learning skills and technique. I like winning. I learned that the harder I worked, the more I learned, the more I won. Wrestling even made me a better football player. But you know, high school became fun. As my high school years wound down, I met with my senior advisor to map out my post-graduation. She advised me that I didn't seem to be college material, so I might want to consider vocational training or the military. That mean I was done wrestling? Then I got a call from Coach Vaughn Hitchcock, also in the California Wrestling Hall of Fame, and he asked if I would be interested in wrestling at Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. I said, yes, I would. He asked, well, what are you planning on majoring in? I said, I'd like to be a game warden. <laughs> he said, well, we don't offer that here at Poly right now, but we'll start you off in ornamental horticulture. <laughs> I said, okay, coach. 
The middle of the year, I switched it to physical education, <laughs> now called kinesiology. My four years of wrestling with national powerhouse Cal Poly, I do believe do enhance my wrestling prowess. After graduating Cal Poly, serving in the military service, and getting my teaching credential, I began my life as a teacher and coach. I loved being a teacher. I loved being a coach. I loved stressing self-discipline, goal setting, hard work, reliability, respect for the family, things my parents taught me. My classroom and the football field, part of my coaching, became my recruiting platforms. Many a wrestler did not know they were going to wrestle until I informed them that they were going to wrestle. <laughs> Royal High School, Newbury Park High School, and Atascadero High School provided wonderful experiences, support, and opportunities for me for success, and hopefully for my athletes for success. The student athletes, the staff, the administration, the communities at all three were phenomenal. They motivated me. And I found out they liked winners. After combined 25 years of being a head coach, I switched places for my very capable assistant coach, Chris Free, at Atascadero, which allowed me to enjoy two more decades as assistant wrestling coach and coaching boys and girls tennis. My wife, Sandy, was as dedicated to the sport of wrestling as I was. She was affectionately referred to as Mrs. Coach and was a surrogate mom to many. It's very appropriate that she participate in this recognition of my seven years of competing and 43 years of coaching the great sport of wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted into the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Dan Pratt. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Florencio Rocha. His presenter is his grandson, Nathan Moreno. Good evening. Um, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame board and uh, everyone that's here. Um, special thanks to uh, Table 17 that uh, played a big part in getting me here. Um, <laughs> uh, it's going to be short. <laughs> I've got, uh, I think I, Steve Warner, uh, uh, Steve Warner out there, uh, Coach. Barner, you know, played a big part in where I'm at today. Larry Morgan, you out there, buddy? Yeah. He's got some stories to tell about his tooth that I says I busted up, um, but I don't think I did. <laughs> uh, I got a little story to say. We're back at the Nationals. Uh, Mike Bull. Uh, one of my best friends, and uh, Larry Morgan, my coach, asked me the first round. He goes, "Who, who, um, who'd you, who'd you pick for, uh, uh, who'd you draw in the first round?" And I go, um, "Joe Carr." 
And uh, I didn't really, wasn't exposed to the NCAA Division I wrestlers much. We were Division Two, And both of them just kind of looked at me and they go, bad draw, you know? That's my best friend and my coach. <laughs> and they just, and uh, I did go on to win that, that match. Um, um, so anyway, uh, thank you, and um, have a good, good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Glo Rocha. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Daryl Vasquez. His presenter is his father, Mr. Larry Vasquez. I'm going to try to uh, stick to the script here. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the entire Hall of Fame, the board, uh, everybody involved in this uh, great event. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and to all the other inductees to share in this great honor. I prayed center mat before every match. This wasn't for luck or superstition. It was a way to honor God. I would pray three simple things. I would pray that I would be able to wrestle to the best of my ability, to have fun, and to glorify God in all I did, win or lose. Other than the wrestling part, unless someone wants to go a few takedowns after, uh, that was my prayer tonight. I want to first thank my wife, my best friend, and my kids for all that they do in making me the luckiest man in the world. My daughter, uh, my daughter reminded my uh, four-year-old this morning um, that daddy was going to get the best daddy award tonight. So uh, I hope they can add that to uh, the, the plaque. Uh, just melt, it melted my heart. Um, thank you to my wife uh, for sharing her day with me. Today's her birthday. Um, she wanted to make it all about me today, uh, even though it was her day. Uh, she truly is a Proverbs 31 wife. I wanted to thank my parents for all the love, the support, the dedication they have had for me over the years. In wrestling, you took us boys everywhere, from daily practices, tournaments across the country, uh, multiple wrestling camps a year in the time, um, coaching us day in, day out. You gave us every opportunity to succeed in this sport, but not just my wrestling, uh, for my parents' love has overflown in every facet of my life. I want to thank my brothers for teaching me, mentoring me, and coaching me, and, the most import and most importantly, being mighty men of God that I can look up to even today. To my in-laws, Mike and Carrie, and my sister, Cheyenne, for not making me an in-law, but for ma making me family. <clears throat> to my aunts and my grandparents who are no longer with us, uh, <clears throat> you are my cheerleaders. Uh, you always have been. We have a small group here, but I think they were louder than all of you. Uh, it takes a village to raise a child. Wrestling and life isn't done alone, and God has blessed me with the greatest village I could ask for. For my wrestling family, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. To all the coaches, teammates, workout partners, wrestling camp coaches, athletes that I got to train with and watch over the years. Uh, my dad, my brothers, uh, Coach David East, who surprised me to be here tonight all the way from Oklahoma, just broke me today. Uh, Larry Morgan, Coach Morgan, uh, John Azevedo, Joe Heskett, Nathan Morgan, Stephen Abbas, Stephen Nilda, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, you all continue to sharpen me over the years. Wrestling has helped me to shape and form me into the man I am today. Um, wrestling is extremely hard. Uh, everything I wrote down has to do with working hard and cutting weight. All the things we have to do over all the years. Um, on top of dealing all that, dealing with the ups and downs of wins and losses and injuries. Um, but my goal was to always be the best wrestler I could be. 
and the best person I could be. Uh, so with that, um, so what I would do with these wins and losses, my senior year after coming off of a great season and a big showdown with Jacob Palomino, I was in the finals at the Reno Tournament of Champions, I believe. It was the first period I found myself in a unique position, one that I didn't typically find myself in. I was fighting back from a huge deficit after getting put to my back twice. It was a snowball effect. The more points he scored, the matter I got, the matter I got, the more points he scored. Uh, the final score ended up being 15 to five. It was not good. It was a big match and an even bigger loss for me. I walked off the mat, pacing back and forth in the warm up area. My dad comes over and after giving me plenty of time to cool off, and he probably did, probably more than he usually does, uh, in the most loving way he could, he asked, what happened? <laughs> he was as shocked as I was. I said one simple thing, I just got my bucket. <laughs> That's all I did. That's all I could think of. Um, but each wrestler in the end gets to enjoy the victories and suffer in the defeats. But it's what we do with these losses in life that make us who we are today. Wrestling was an outlet for me to become the man of God I am today, a man that's filled with wins and losses in life that has learned to grow and honor God in each one, a man that has <clears throat> learned to keep battling even when life is difficult or doesn't go a certain way, and most importantly, a man who sees what Jesus did on the cross for me and for you. To be thankful for loving me that, that much, to be encouraged to get back in the race and to honor him with everything I have. So I pray you all know one thing today, that Jesus loves you all, that he died on the cross for you so that you can live. Thank you. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Daryl Vasquez. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. G Eugene Walker. His presenters are the class of 2004 Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Bruce Burnett, and class of 2006 Lifetime Service recipient, as well as our legacy recipient, Mr. Mike Stricker. And accepting this award is Eugene Walker's daughter, Mrs. Heidi Priest. Good to see a lot of you people in here that I've uh, known over the years, and now I have the opportunity to speak on Eugene's behalf, and I have it right here. And Lorenzo, I got to be honest, I was coaching Kirk Mammon that night. I, I had no idea you were going to the combine because I think we were ahead and I'd have just called him back. <laughs> all right. Greetings to each of you and a sincere congratulations to all the California Wrestling Hall of Fame recipients. It's my privilege to be here tonight on behalf of Eugene Walker and to express his many thanks to the California Hall of Fame Selection Committee and to all of you who've supported wrestling. I hope I'm able to convey his thoughts as well as honor his impact on our sport. I first met Eugene in 1965 as we faced off in a high school wrestling match, North Bakersfield against South Bakersfield. He became my friend and teammate at Bakersfield Junior College and then again at Idaho State University. We both found our life's work, and I believe the Lord's calling, in, by becoming wrestling coaches. While Eugene and I did not live in the same state after college, we shared the same journey, where much of our focus and time was spent wrestling, watching wrestling, coaching wrestling, or discussing wrestling. I believe there's three primary things that Eugene would want me to convey tonight. First, he'd want to thank the sport of wrestling for all that it taught him. Resilience, grit, hard work, sacrifice, focus, and tenacity. He would also want to thank the sport of wrestling for the quality of people who entered his life, be it teammates, competitors, parents of athletes, coaches, tournament directors, volunteers, athletic trainers. And he'd want to give a special thanks to his mentors, 
high school coach Joe C., Bakersfield Junior College coach Bruce Fitzenreiter, and Idaho State University coach Tom Jewell. Second, Eugene would want to acknowledge and thank his family and publicly tell them how much he loves them and what their support meant to him. Third, Eugene would want to tell all of us how important the work we do is and the manner in which we model and care for those who come under our sphere of influence. The true legacy of our work is much more than the wins we stroke, strive so hard to achieve. It's about the stepping stone of molding character, responsibility, and honoring one's commitment to others. A personal example of this, example of this would be my high school coach, Winford Bootman, who was inducted here tonight. I know Eugene would have loved to have been here this evening, and if he were, he would give a special thank you to Terry, Heidi, Heather, and all the grandchildren, as they were gifts that gave him the needed support in this great sport of wrestling. Finally, I personally would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who guided me into the sport of wrestling and gifted me with colleagues and friends like many of you here tonight, as well as California Hall of Fame recipient, Eugene Walker. I can't believe I can still serve him. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, inducting the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, Mr. Eugene Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, the late Mr. Robert Arbalo. Accepting the award is Robert Arbalo's son, Mr. Damian Arbalo, and presenting the award is Mr. Anthony Arbalo. Well, uh, first of all, we want to thank, uh, again, uh, like many or a few of you have expressed your gratitude to God and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, my dad is an amazing person. And one thing, he's absent in body today, but he's present with the Lord because he was a believer in Jesus Christ. And, uh, but he was also an amazing man. He was also an amazing wrestler, an amazing father, an amazing husband, and uh, just all around great person. And uh, I want to be. I want to say thank you to the California Wrestling Hall of Fame. I want to say thank you to everybody who uh, inducted him into the Hall of Fame. I also want to thank my mom for being here, my tia, my tío, all the family that's here, my nephews, Robbie and Aiden, my brother RJ, my brother Gabriel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting my dad. And uh, my dad had wrestlers all over the place and people who, uh, who he impacted their lives, you know, with, with the sport of wrestling. And one thing I know is that my dad was, uh, was a very disciplined athlete. He, he showed us how to be disciplined and he showed many people how to be disciplined and he impacted lives all over the state of California. And we're just grateful tonight to be able to receive this award. Thank you once again. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Morales, and thank you, everybody. God bless you. Nice job, Andrew. Nice job.
Ladies and gentlemen, inducted in the 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame, the late Mr. Robert Arbalo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our 2024 California Wrestling Hall of Fame inductee, the late Mr. Ed Davies. <laughs> Accepting the award is our class of 2005 Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Dennis Delito. If you thank God for one thing, I'm the last speaker. <laughs> you gotta tell it like it is. I'm very honored to represent Eddie Davies. Most of you probably don't know Eddie Davies. He was a fantastic wrestler at Fresno State. He only lost one match. He got beat in the Nationals. And in those days, when you get beat, the guy didn't be, get to the finals, you're out of the tournament. He went through his whole collegiate year. He's a JC state champ, a two-time Pacific Coast champ. He was really uh, a guy that nobody really knew about. But he was very, very good. I remember, I'll tell you a quick story. Boy, you guys don't want a long story, I know that. <laughs> I remember going to the Fresno State gym and walk, see this guy walk in. He had a mobile uh, uh, service station outfit on. I don't think he even worked out. He had 10 kids when he was 17 years old. I mean, he was really too advanced for his age, but he, uh, he I don't know what I just said. Am I all right, Lorenzo? <laughs> I don't even drink and I feel drunk. <laughs> okay, I'll go to this one story, I'll probably screw it up. The one loss Ed had was a guy named Huff. Well, Ed, his senior, uh, his, I think it was th third or fourth year of uh, teaching, he decided to go to Okinawa. I took over his job at Clovis High, which is, was a pretty good deal. Uh, he went to Okinawa, well, five or six or seven years old later, there was a guy down the street. Who was it? Huff. The, guy, the only guy he beat was in Okinawa. He was his next door neighbor. Not next door neighbor, but he's a neighbor. Huff wrestled Eddie Davies' son. Eddie Davies' son beat him. So the, the Davies got even for the Huff. <laughs> Is that all right now, Kay? <laughs> I want to introduce the Davies family. I know you guys are just ready for those exits, so am I. Uh, the Davies, are they up there? Where'd the Davies go? Okay. It's Kay Davies, Bob Davies, Kathy, Kathy Davies. What's well, it? Probably not Kathy Davies. I don't know. <laughs> I've been drinking too much tonight. <laughs> That's just Kay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's do it. Right there. Oh, yeah. You're over here, Dennis. Right, right, right here. 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 Right I just say yes, you sure can. Don't you just love Dennis Delito? <laughs> Once again, let's give one more round of applause 
there our new inductee, the late Mr. Ed Davies. I love coach. Before this thing even started, he looks at me and he's like, hey, can you at least start this thing a little bit faster and get out of here? <laughs> coach, I can do the best I can. We got 33 inductees. We'll see what we can do. So we saved the best for last. Okay. It's been an amazing evening and some of our closing remarks I want to bring to your attention first of all. We will do our group photos, our lifetime service recipients. Please make sure that you have your jackets as well as your award, as well as Hall of Fame inductees, make sure you have your jackets and awards. We'll take those pictures right over here, okay, by our photographer, Armin Guerrero. Also want to just thank, again, the facility, the catering, our executive board, our registration, and most importantly, all the beautiful faces here that we have in attendance. Next year, the bank will be on May 17th, 2025 in Laguna Hills. There's also a wrestling tournament on May 17th. I don't know how he's going to do it, but Dwayne Morgan says, hey, I'm going to be in Fresno, start the tournament, and then I'm going to drive to Southern California, Laguna Hills. I said, Dwayne, can I take that weekend off? I live in Pismo Beach. It's easy for me to ride down 101, and I'll be there shortly. He said, sure. So thanks, Dwayne, for letting me have next year off as far as on that. At this time, may we have all 18 lifetime service recipients please stand at this time so we can acknowledge you. And please remain standing. Please remain standing. Also, can we have our Hall of Fame inductees please stand at this time? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, individuals such as these honored this evening is the reason that wrestling is the oldest and greatest sport that continues to thrive and prosper in California. Inductees and service award recipients, our, our congratulations to you. You are most appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our evening. Thank you so much. Have a great, great evening. <laughs>